Hey students, this video is going to go over how to write an equilibrium expression and how to solve for k when we have equilibrium concentrations. So first off, when we write our k expressions, it's going to be the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants. And this is based off of the law of mass action, which simply states that the rate of a chemical reaction is proportionate to the concentrations of our substances. Now, in this class, in pre-P chemistry, we're only going to be focusing on equilibrium with concentration. We could look at equilibrium with pressures, and then there's um, equilibrium with, uh, with solubility and KSP, but we're not going to do that in pre-AP chemistry. So when you're looking at a chemical reaction, this should be an arrow here, not a box. But when we write our equilibrium expressions, you're going to have the concentration of each of your products. So you can see our products are C and D. So the concentrations of each product is on the top. The concentration of each reactant, A and B, are going to be at the bottom of our equilibrium expression. And you can also see that each of those um, reactants and products is raised to a power. And that power is going to correspond with their coefficient. So if M is raised, or sorry, if D has a coefficient of M, it's going to be raised to the M power, okay? We will be multiplying our concentrations on the top, multiplying our concentrations on the bottom, and then dividing. So if this was an equilibrium expression, again, this should be an arrow, not a box. And when we write our equilibrium expression, it's going to be the concentration of the products. So we're going to have the concentration of NO2 and the concentration of H2O up here on the top. And don't forget, we're going to raise these to the power, which is the coefficient. So this would be a 4 here, and this would be a 6 over there. Then we would have the concentration of NH3 raised to the fourth power and the concentration of O2 raised to the seventh power. So when I'm telling you to write an equilibrium expression, this is what I mean. K is equal to concentrations of our products divided by concentration of our reactants without plugging any numbers in first, okay? Now this K that we're gonna be using here, it's a big K compared to the little K from the last unit. And we're not gonna have to mess with any crazy units like we did last time. Now, one important thing to note when we write equilibrium expressions is that solids and liquids do not get written into our equilibrium expression because concentrations of pure solids and pure liquids can't change. They're always gonna be constant. So we're only going to be putting gases and aqueous solutions in our equilibrium expression. So here for this one, if we're gonna write an equilibrium expression, we have K equals concentration of CO2 would be on the top, and then that would be it. We would have no denominator here because we have a solid on the reactant side. We don't include the calcium oxide because that is also a solid. It's just gases and aqueous solutions that get written into our expression. So we are going to be solving for K. There's a couple different ways that we're gonna solve for K. So we're gonna start off nice and easy first and we're going to solve for K if we already have our equilibrium concentration. So remember, when we wrote K, that is at equilibrium. That's our equilibrium constant. So if you're reading a question and it's telling you that it's at equilibrium, then we're going to plug everything into our expression and just solve for K. Now, we've talked about during the Le Chatelier's principle lecture that K does not change with concentration or with pressure. K is only going to change with temperature. So you'll see that we might mention a, a specific temperature in the problem. That's not going to actually factor into our calculation at all. We just specify that because it could be a different value at a different temperature. Okay. And like I said before, we're not going to mess with our units. The units do vary with each reaction, um, but we don't have to worry about writing any kind of unit with K for this particular uh, topic. So remember, when we're solving for K, it's the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants. This is a very generic way to write it here, but I want to just talk about this for a second. So we can say that based on K, we know whether or not a reaction is going to favor the reactants 
or if it's going to favor the products. We know if it's going to favor a forward reaction or if it favors the reverse reaction. And that's based on the value of K. So if K is large, so if it's greater than one, so if K is greater than one, we say that it favors the products, which means that, excuse me here, that it favors the forward reaction because, let me just write this down here really quick. Again, K is the products over the reactants. So if you're favoring the products, your numerator is going to be high, your denominator is going to be low, and so our K value is going to be greater than one. Conversely though, if K is less than one, it's going to favor our reactants, which means that it's going to favor the reverse reaction. And that's because if we're favoring our reactants and we're making more reactants, we have a greater number in our denominator, which makes K smaller, okay? When you're looking at your K value, there's no relation or correlation between uh, the K expression itself and the value of the equilibrium constant and the time it takes to reach equilibrium. And we don't compare equilibrium constants from one reaction to another reaction because there's different stoichiometric relationships there. So when you look at example three, uh, 13, excuse me, here it says the analysis of an equilibrium mixture of nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia contained in a one liter flask at 300 degrees Celsius gives the following results. So it's telling us the equilibrium mixture. So it's telling us the concentrations at equilibrium. So we've got um, hydrogen plus nitrogen producing ammonia. Now, a couple of important points to note here, it's telling us a volume and it's telling us our moles. We need to pay attention to the volume because that could change um, our concentration. So if this was not one liter, it would actually change our concentration. But we have 0 0.15 molar here, we have 0 0.25 molar here, we have 0 0.10 molar here. Now, what I recommend is writing out your K expression first without any numbers in it. So writing out your K means that we have ammonia squared up here, and then we have hydrogen cubed down here, and then we have nitrogen. So we have our, reactant, our products over our reactants. So we're gonna plug in our concentration of the ammonia. We're gonna square that. We're going to plug in the concentration of our hydrogen. We're going to cube that. And we'll plug in the concentration of our nitrogen, and that's not going to be squared or cubed or anything because there's no coefficient for that. So we want to make sure that we're going to calculate this out correctly. And we should get to two sig figs an answer of 12. we we'll round up to 12. Now, because our K value is greater than one, we can say that this favors our products. Looking at example number 14 here, it says the decomposition of hydrogen iodide at 450 degrees produces an equilibrium mixture that contains 0.5 moles of hydrogen. The equilibrium constant for 0 0.020 for the reaction. How many moles of iodine and hydrogen iodide are present at equilibrium? So we have iodine that's being produced here as well. So when we're looking at our work here, we want to go ahead and write our equilibrium expression. And everything is going to be a gas. I think this reaction was given to you. And our equilibrium expression is going to be, oh, I forgot to balance, hydrogen times iodine over hydrogen iodide. And that's going to be squared. So it tells us that the hydrogen was 0 0.50. So we're trying to find out how much hydrogen iodide and how much um, hydrogen mono, hydrogen iodide, excuse me, 
and iodine we had at equilibrium. So what we're going to do is we can see that based on our reaction here, we have equal amounts of hydrogen and iodine because the coefficients are the same for both. So we know that if we were able to make 0.5 moles of hydrogen, we were also going to make 0.5 moles of iodine. So now we just have to solve for the hydrogen iodide. So we're going to plug in our k value because it tells us that our equilibrium constant is 0 0.020. So we have 0 0.020 here. We're going to have 0 0.50 times 0 0.50 up here. And then we're going to have x squared because we're trying to solve for what that is. So we need to get x squared by itself on this side. So that means we're going to have 0 0.50 times 0 0.50 divided by 0 0.020 down here. And so we'll have to take the square root of that. So we'll first we'll solve for this 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.02. So our x squared is equal to 12.5. We're going to take the square root so that we can get x by itself. And we should have just two sig figs, so that would be 3.5. And this is going to be moles, because just, we're looking for how much of that we had. It asks which side is this of the reaction does this favor. When we look at our k value, and our k is 0 0.020, that's less than 1, so it's going to favor our reactive side. Okay? So if you have any questions when you're doing your practice, let me know. You're going to do pages. Um, six to seven, but only one through eight at this point. Okay, once we look at the next video um, tomorrow, we'll be able to do the other problems. But please start working on these ones to make sure we understand how to solve um, using equilibrium mixtures at this point. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any questions.